Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. In developing local news, a Tasmanian Supreme Court judge has been asked to take leave. For more, we're joined by our reporter, Brianna Boylan. Brianna, what can you tell us? Well, Kim, at this stage we know very little. Attorney General Guy Barnett put out a media release this afternoon announcing the decision. He says it's in relation to a significant matter with a judge and will consider taking further action if appropriate. So it certainly seems like a serious situation, Kim. OK, thank you very much there, Brianna. Tasmania's tourism sector has been dealt a blow with Air New Zealand to ground flights between Auckland and Hobart next year. The airline forced to axe dozens of routes due to an urgent safety issue. But local industry leaders are confident it's, not a, pa it's a pause, not a farewell. No longer saying kia ora to Tasmania. Launched in 2021, the Trans-Tasman flights helped Air New Zealand restore the international in Hobart International Airport, while also spreading the wings of local tourism. From all accounts, it's been going really well. In fact, it's been going um, so well that the, the company has put on an additional flight over summer. But when winter kicks in next April, New Zealand's national carrier will halt the flights as it deals with a safety issue. A number of its aircraft will undergo maintenance due to concerns about a potential manufacturing fault in engines. With those planes out of action, Air New Zealand were forced to plan for changes, saying logistics meant they had to make tough decisions about about their schedules. The Premier making his feelings clear. I've expressed to Air New Zealand uh, this morning uh, in a phone call that I am disappointed. But both he and the tourism industry are confident it's a temporary move. Working through uh, some uh, partnership arrangements to recommence those flights in November 24. While today is something that they need to do, we're really looking forward to working with them and Tourism Tasmania. It's the second blow to next year's off-season, with Dark Mofo also on pause. The Tourism Council wanting a united plan in place. Really strong strategy for next winter about how we're getting people down to Tassie to experience our wonderful winter. In a statement, Hobart Airport CEO says they've been made aware of the news and look forward to flights resuming between the two cities sometime later next year. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. Following concerns some state servants escaped being held accountable for involvement in child sexual abuse, the Premier's launched a staunch defence of the government's processes. Anyone that has uh, harmed children will be held accountable. Anyone that has done the wrong thing uh, will be held accountable. And I give that ironclad guarantee uh, to every victim survivor in Tasmania. The Commission of Inquiry's final report makes only one finding of misconduct. The Premier did not answer whether he had obtained information provided to the state's lawyer of those who were being considered for a finding. Potential investors are ready to buy into an alternative vision for Hobart's Waterfront Stadium, according to those behind the project. They faced a parliamentary committee in Hobart today, claiming all they need now is the government's approval. With their waterfront proposal gathering steam, Dean Coleman and Paul Lennon's next sell is to a parliamentary committee. Our proposal will create an iconic gateway entrance to Hobart from across the Tasman Bridge it can become our opera house. Spruiking potential private investment and their consultation process with all stakeholders on board, also casting doubt over the government's plans and costings. A stadium, you can't build a stadium for less than a billion dollars. Claiming they have partners ready to buy in, they say they just need the government's green light, asking for it by Christmas. I'd like to because it's just so paramount because there's, we, we don't want to be um, beholden to the AFL. The government's keeping its plans. The uh, proponents of uh, Stadium 2, as it's known, uh, will need to do their due diligence, uh, come back, of course, uh, to government uh, with a very clear uh, plan. From what I saw, they'd done a lot more work and achieved a lot more than the government had in a lot longer. We've got momentum with, with the Mac Point Stadium. It's progressing through the various processes of of the project of state significance steps. Speaking at a luncheon today, Tasmania's AFL chair said details about the club are on the way. In March we'll be talking about the uh, team name, we'll be talking about team colours, we'll be talking about memberships. The team moving forward, even if the stadium's progress is a little slower. 
Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. There are concerns up to six proposed wind farms are in danger of not going ahead after TAS Networks revised plans for the Northwest Transmission Line. The project, crucial for Marinus Link, will now be delivered in two stages, delaying connection to the grid for wind farms at Whaleback Ridge, Robins Island and more. These are massive projects. This is billions of dollars of private investment that was going to be flowing into Tasmania, which is now all at risk. TAS Network says it's working closely with landholders and key stakeholders where there are impacts. A Tasmanian charity has issued a desperate call for help as it faces a surge in demand heading into Christmas. Hobart City Mission says it's handed out 824 food packs in September, well above the long-term average of 535. It's asking the public to dig deep and donate non-perishable food items. The mission's CEO says the lingering inflation crisis is pushing people. In a, in a can uh, on the fridge, but now that's gone. And all of a sudden, people can't put food on the table. Parents are skipping meals so they can feed their children. Christmas is looking just as busy, with 900 people already applying for its holiday assistance program. The state government has received backlash for its reliance on locum healthcare workers. In the past financial year, more than $68 million was spent on fly-in doctors, nearly double compared to the previous period. The opposition has deemed it a waste and says that taxpayer money would be better spent on a retention policy to stop local medics leaving for better pay. We've got to be competitive with other states. Earlier this year, our doctors across our hospitals took unprecedented industrial action to get a better pay deal from this government. The Premier says its recent wage deal with doctors and nurses points to a good pathway for staff attraction and retention. Reports of a rift within the Liberal Party are affecting pre-selection for the next federal election. Here's state political reporter Josh Duggan. Josh, what's the latest? Kim, national media this week reported that Braddon MP Gavin Pearce is threatening not to stand again in the 2025 election. His apparent demand for the outspoken Bass MP Bridget Archer not to be pre-selected for the party. Seven Tasmania News understands the party's pushing back pre-selection for Bass and Braddon, partly to buy some time to sort out this internal warfare. It was expected later this month. It's now due next year. State Director Peter Coulson said today the process is confidential. Most sources did remain confident, though, that there is a path for both to run again as Liberals in 2025. The Eagle has landed at the Wild Mersey mountain bike trail and it sent construction off track. Rangers spotting a breeding pair of wedge-tailed eagles near the final section of the track, forcing work to stop until the end of breeding season. Once we get that clearance, we should be able to complete the trail leading up to the bridge within three to four weeks so it's not a long-term delay but it's just another you know litany of delays that have unfortunately plagued that project. The existing trails remain open to the public. Around 30 per cent of Tasmania's east coast reefs have been wiped out by the long-spined sea urchin according to a Senate inquiry report informed by more than 150 stakeholders. The pests drift with the currents, colonising areas and eating any biodiversity in their path, which in turn hurts our fisheries. We can actually have a win-win here where we can establish a national fishery, we can go out and move the, remove these urchins and we can then sell them and eat them, create jobs in the industry. The report recommends the federal government fund an existing task force with $70 million to tackle the problem. The Hobart Hurricanes have gone back to school to teach students the tricks of their trade. It's hoped the lesson will inspire more young girls to pick up the bat with female participation lower than hoped. Matching up against the pros. This junior squad sporting purple is part of the Cricket Blast program, building their batting, bowling and fielding skills in a fun way. What is it about cricket that you like? Just playing games and learning stuff. We have the PE teacher here that's delivering the program. Um, it's in an area that, you know, the school they're familiar with, they come here every day, so it's comfort comfortable 
uh, and they're playing with their friends as well. So normally we see greater greater buy-in. The women's game has grown so so fast and so so big that um, any young girl can use this as an opportunity to be a professional cricket player. The Hobart Hurricanes school and holiday programs are hoped to boost female participation, with less players going through the traditional avenues. We held one in the October school holidays where we had over 123 girls participating. So yes, it was cricket focused, but we also had a colour run. We had water balloons, we had water pistols. A free clinic for girls and boys will run tomorrow at Blundstone Arena before the Hurricanes take on Brisbane Heat. They can register on the Hurricanes page and then we'll see them there. Brianna Boylan, 7 Tasmania News. An intricate piece of Aboriginal art will greet visitors to Don College, unveiled to students at a special assembly this morning. It took circular head artist Gypsy Draven more than 400 hours to paint. From a distance you can't see the detail, which I like because people just think it's plain, but when you walk up to it, then you see all the intri intricate pieces that are added into it, which is really good because it surprises everybody, and I like surprising people. Commissioned by former student Alia Dennison, the masterpiece was funded by a $5,000 bursary she received after winning the Ampol All-Rounder Award last year. It's about bringing community together, including everyone, like the collective feel that is here at Don, and it's going to be right in the foyer in the welcoming area. Alia flying home from University in Queensland for the unveiling. The streets of Deloraine are teeming with people as the Tasmanian Craft Fair fires up for another year. Among the 240 exhibitors, you'll find everything from kids' toys to pottery, even guitars, all ready to buy. I think people are starting to care more about sustainable work and what they're bringing into their homes and the fact that this is handmade by somebody locally. We've got events for adults. We've got pottery classes, we've got um, a little program called Tool School which is um, a program for kids, an educational program where they can play with timber and stuff. The fair runs until Monday. Fair Brother has been announced as the preferred tenderer for the mental health precinct at St John's Park in Newtown. The $48 million works will begin this year with a 15-bed residential unit, eating disorder clinic and more on site. We provide the CAMS team with modern facilities so they can see more children, um, more ad adolescents in a, a purpose-built facility. It's great for our business. We train a lot of apprentices. It's uh, another breeding ground for those guys and girls to get into that. It's due to be completed in 2025. The Hurricanes have boosted their WBBL finals chances with a win over Melbourne. A 75 from Aussie legend Meg Lanning putting the Stars in a commanding position first up, but they then had to deal with not only with an informal Elise Villani, but also a barrage from our local birds. The captain, Naomi Stalenberg and Nicola Carey hitting the Hurricanes to a six-wicket win with just four balls to spare. I think our team is doing really well at the moment. There's always somebody else stepping up, which is really good. Um, we had a few good games this past few days, so um, yeah, hopefully we can continue that into the next few games. The Hurricanes will put their home ground advantage to the test tomorrow night against top of the table Brisbane in a bid to go four in a row. The North vs South rivalry is heating up on the pickleball court. Tassie's top talents have been selected from 14 clubs and they'll take to Elfin Sports Centre on Sunday to see which end of the state is best with a racket. Who will walk away with a trophy though is still anyone's guess. Fairly confident. I've, I've looked at both the teams and as a, a former analyst I've looked at the, the form guide and I thought yeah, they're very, very evenly matched. This is the third event, so Southern won the first one, Northern last year, so hopefully they're going to win it back this year. Entry is free for spectators, with play getting underway 10 o'clock Sunday morning. Kim, you can go to the craft fair on Saturday and the pickleball Sunday, weekend sorted. Oh, thank you very much. I'll think about that one. Thanks, Nick. Good evening. Today, Hobart 13 degrees. Quite the contrast in Launceston, 9 degrees warmer, recording the state's top of 22. Devonport, 19. Burnie, 21 degrees. Further out, we need 21. Lowhead, 19. St Helens, Friendly Beaches and Ooze, 18. Flinders Island, 17. King Island, 16. Mariah Island and Grove, 14. Lyweenie, just 13 degrees. Mostly cloudy conditions over western and southern Tasmania today. There was patchy cloud in the northeast and northwest coast. Remained relatively cloud-free 
during the afternoon. We see areas of low level cloud over the state and the south coast of the mainland. Thunderstorms continue over eastern New South Wales, Queensland and northern WA. Tomorrow a high sits to the west of Tasmania extending a ridge over the state. Several troughs stretch all the way from WA across northern Australia and into Victoria. Southeast to southwesterly winds tend to 20 knots reaching up to 30 knots about the northwest during the morning. Winds tending east to southeasterly in the north. Southwesterly swells in the west and south building to 3 metres. A strong wind warning continues for the far northwest coast tomorrow. Forecast for Saturday Hobart cloudy 15 degrees, a shower or two for Maydina 13, partly cloudy in Oatlands 15 degrees. A possible shower in Launceston 19, similar conditions for Devonport 16, shower also for Liawini with just 12. Burnie a shower or two 14, 15 and cloudy in both Strawn and Marawar. St Helens cloudy expecting a top of 16 becoming cloudy in Swansea 15, partial cloud in Alford 15 also. Forecast for Sunday isolated inland showers about the north otherwise fine conditions elsewhere. Monday fine although partly cloudy across the state. Tuesday isolated inland showers are likely to, de to develop during the day. Looking further north tomorrow the mercury is soaring in Perth expecting 37 degrees, sunny also in Darwin 35, 27 and a shower or two in Brisbane 22 and showers in Sydney. Current conditions this Friday evening. Hobart mostly cloudy 11 degrees. Rain has arrived in Launceston 15, partly cloudy and also 15 in Devonport. We've come to the end of another working week, Kim, and boy, they're going quick. Wow, must be a sign you're working hard, Kaya. See you again tomorrow. And that is all your news for now. If you're in the north, enjoy your long weekend. I'll see you again Monday. Good night.